Um, okay, Sally, it's just, it's two minutes past eight and we have a good lot of people. Have, are they all tuned in just now? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, a very uh, good evening to uh, each and every one of you from the Sligo Field Club. This, uh, I think, I was just discussing with Sally there. They think this is about lecture number seven now on Zoom, and they have worked very, very well for us. And um, it's it's a, it's a a good night to be in because it's very windy here in Baltrap where I am anyway, and I wouldn't like the thought of driving into Sligo. So it's great to have it from the comfort of our own homes. Uh, our lecture this evening is by. Primrose Wilson, and uh, Primrose will give us a lecture entitled Mausolea Conserved by the Follies Trust between 2008 and 2021. That's over that 13 year period. Now, who is Primrose? Primrose uh, was born in County Roscommon. She trained as a nurse in Belfast Royal Victoria Hospital, and she now resides in County near Armagh. She has a strong amateur interest in our built heritage and served on the Heritage Council between 2000 and 2005. She also chaired the uh, Historic Buildings Council of Northern Ireland between 1994 and the year 2000. In 2006, uh, along with others who shared a passion for built heritage, they set up the Follies Trust. Since then, they have been involved in the conservation of 30 structures across the island of Ireland including the Coldstone Lion on Moat Park Gateway outside of Roscommon Town. We are uh, really looking forward to the lecture. And um, as Sally says there in her note, we should all be wrapped up and finished by the, uh, or for the Late Late Toy Show. So Sally, that's very kind of you and very considerate. So hopefully we won't run over and miss any of it. <laughs> so um, I will hand you over to, to uh, Primrose for tonight's lecture. And um, we'll take the questions uh, at the end of the programme. So, uh, Primrose, you're very, very welcome. Martin, thank you very much indeed. It's, um, it's lovely to be with you. Um, and as you say, it's a great pleasure to be inside tonight rather than uh, having to be um, outside. Um, it's also lovely to speak to the Sligo Field Club, um, the Follies Trust, um, 25 of us, 27 of us. Um, came on a visit there this year and we were shown around by Wendy Lyons and by Siobhan Ryan. Um, we had a lovely couple of days and um, saw the delights, well, a few of the delights of Sligo because we didn't really want to rush around too many things. But it was a lovely visit and uh, thank you again to Wendy and, and to Siobhan. Um, and as I say, thank you for in inviting me to speak. Well, this is, this is our logo, um, and it was drawn for us by somebody called Rosalind Mulholland. And it's actually is um, the one of the first projects that we worked on, the Greg Mausoleum in North Breeder Graveyard in, in Belfast. Um, and um, you might think it's a strange logo for a, um, an organization that calls itself a Follies Trust, because this is actually the definition of a folly of being an eye catcher, a building in a contrived landscape, sham ruin, and um, it's an eccentric, unusual um, structure. But we've always um, taken our remit to be a wide one and um, not kept to just what are seen as being useless buildings, because clearly Mosley are not useless buildings. Um, and this um, uh, map is shows where um, we have um, done our um, uh, projects that we've been involved with. Um, there are two X's, and the two X's, one at Garva Pyramid, the other, the Church Spire at Hollymount, um, are projects we haven't done. But you can see that there was the Grady Mausoleum in Knockany and Limerick, that's the furthest south, Stone Fountain, Kilkenny, Pyramid Mausolea in Kildare, and quite a lot up the um, northeast corner of, of um, Northern Ireland um, as well. So um, that just gives you some idea of the spread that we really are um, across the um, island of Ireland. And I am conscious that you are all much more expert than I am. And um, I am in awe of 
Mary and Martin Timoney and their um, amazing book. Um, the scholarship and the research involved is tremendous. Um, but I hope you'll find it of interest to hear about what the Follies Trust has been doing as far as mausolea are concerned. And I'm not just going to show you um, nine um, mausolea. Um, I'm also going to add in uh, Holly Mount Smire, which as I said, we haven't done yet, um, but also the Moat Park um, line in um, Roscommon for no good reason other than the fact that I'm a Roscommon woman mm -hmm. um, and Sligo is an adjoining county and I thought that you'd like to see it. So um, I should explain that uh, we, um, we don't have any staff or office. Trustees do all the um, admin work if you like, but we always choose and use the best conservation experts um, and contractors when we're doing projects. So these are the, were the first ones that we decided to go with um, for a variety of different reasons. Some of them because people like James Stevens Curl had been raising awareness for many years of the fate of these um, mausolea and um, the, his concern about something um, happening to them. And so had Hugh Dixon as well. And um, so we decided that we might as well start with a bang, as they say. Um, and that's part of the reason why we went for this one. And this is um, uh, a mausoleum to the Rainey family. Um, all that vegetation is not coming from a tree behind. It is growing on the structure itself. Um, this is the Greg mausoleum, the one that I explained uh, was uh, part of our logo. And this was when the vegetation had been taken off. Um, and now I have got a little pointer, which I'm hoping to be able to use. And just have a look at that funny little knob there. And I'll come back to it again later, but I just want to draw your attention to it. Sometimes structures look worse when you take off the vegetation. This was part way through the work. And um, I hope you can see that um, the funny little bit that you I showed you on the last structure is now sitting there. Um, it's um, it was part of the um, the the urn on the top. It wasn't really an urn, but sort of finial. And um, uh, you can also see when you look at um, these urns had been lying on the ground before. They're now put back upright, but you can see that there was new um, supports for them. Also the top, um, which there were sort of flaming lamps really, weren't they? Mm. Um, and they had to be renewed. Uh, and so did, did those ones as well. This one looked better. And this is um, further progress, a uh, completely new piece on the top there. And this, believe it or not, was one of the flames from the top of the um, torches that we actually found uh, lying beside the um, uh, beside the structure. So, sorry, I'll move the red pointer out of the way because it can be a little bit disruptive. Um, again, this is going back just to the rainy a little bit. I'm showing you the vegetation, the view from the top. One of the workmen nearly ended up on the ground on his head. He leant against uh, one of those small pyramids on the corner, only to. Sally. <clears throat> yeah, Martin, I'm not sure. I think Primrose's internet mightn't be the best. Um, that, that's a great thing. We were going very well. We were going well there now. Well, let me see. Yeah. I think she's gone. I wonder, it could be the storm now. Um, it could be the storm, yeah. But just give her a minute and see if she can come back in. All right. Yeah. As well. Right. Okay. 
Um, I'm terribly sorry, everybody, that um, uh, that uh, that we that I lost you there. Um, I'm not quite sure. I, I don't really want to go back too far. Um, I'm just going to go on to the. Um, this is where I think I lost you before. Is that correct? If somebody could put a thumbs up or something. Yeah. 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 That that's good. Thank you. That's great. Um, so this was um, uh, when we'd done the first two Mosley in uh, Knock Breeder Graveyard. Uh, we ran out of uh, out of money, as one does. Um, and um, we started on phase two, which is the uh, Waddle Cunningham. Uh, it was to a merchant in Belfast. Um, and um, <clears throat> as you can see, the vegetation on it was absolutely appalling. Um, and um, uh, during some ill-advised work in um, the 1980s, the parish had put some poured some cement over the top of this um, structure, and it of course had cracked, um, and then the vegetation had grown through. So it was a very sorry state. Um, as a result, uh, we had to spend um, a great deal of uh, funds on, on the um, renewal of stonework, because we felt that was the only place way to to keep it um, safe and secure for the future. So. Um, you can quite easily see really where the new stone um, is. It has mellowed now and the color is really quite good. But the nice thing was that the finials um, and the embellishments um, were still there. And um, many of the um, uh, pilasters and, and columns were also in, intact. Um, the stone, it, the color looks doesn't look quite right, but it did actually match it um, geologically. And this shows the interrelationship between the Greg Mausoleum, which we'd done at the earlier phase, and, and the Waddle Cunningham. So both of these merchants were looking down um, on, on Belfast um, port, which uh, had, um, had made them rich. Um, and this is the grave of Sir Charles Lanyon, which is nearby. He was probably Belfast's most uh, famous architect, I think he would say. Um, in 2009, we produced the first of our publications. We've now produced seven um, books, all in the same house style, but this was the first one. And um, it included essays on, on people buried in the graveyards, family history, um, and um, on the building of the, um, of the church as well. I don't know if many of you know this cast iron um, uh, mausoleum in Clonburn in County Galway. But if you don't, uh, please do divert some of these days and go and see um, see it. That's as it was when when uh, when work started. Um, and um, it's, um, as you can see, there's an urn lying on the ground, broken, um, uh, broken railings, um, and um, it was altogether in a fairly sorry state. Um, that photograph just shows the sort of height of it. It's, it is a big structure. It was um, um, erected for Colonel Morris Dennis, who died in 1863. He was a military man who, at the age of 52, married a 20-year-old. And <clears throat> when he died um, nine years later, he left a note in his will saying, my re remains I desire may be brought to Clonburn, my nephew's place, and there interred at the expense of my dear wife. So uh, he was interred in there, and so was his brother, John Dennis. And John Dennis is somebody that um, <clears throat> we, um, uh, those of us who live Roscommon, Sligo, Galway, um, his, um, his, um, The painting of him on a white horse, um, which was, um, which can be seen in many houses, um, the house where I was born had one uh, of them, because um, it was presented to him, the painting, when he retired as master of the Galway Blazers. And um, all the subscribers were given a copy of it, and those are the copies that are um, in, in enhanced so many of the um, uh, houses in the west of Ireland. This was the iron lying at the ground. Yes, yes, yes. 
This was the Iron Line, the grand, very honest people around Plumbury, and I think you would agree, um, because most people uh, would, seeing that lying in the ground, would have taken it away and put it in their garden. Um, and this is it after work was completed. Bushy Park Ironworks did the work and they did a fantastic job. Iron back up again, parapet repaired, new wreaths on the side of it where they had gone, and then um, the railings fixed up. The local school took a great interest in what was happening. The children came up and, and did uh, lots of lovely drawings. And um, this was the book that we uh, produced at the end of it. And you can see John Dennis uh, on his horse there with uh, several of his dogs um, and a lovely uh, drawing by um, Michael Craig, which is from Mausolea Hibernica uh, on, on the back cover. This is the furthest south that we've ever worked in Knockany in County Limerick. Um, and this structure was restored by um, a local group um, in a, a redundant Church of Ireland um, church graveyard. It's one to the O'Grady family um, around about um, 1860s. And um, as you can see, the Liscanner stone was lifting from the vegetation, etc. Um, and it was in poor order. They raised a lot of money um, and uh, managed to do all of the work. But the one thing that they didn't have uh, any, um, uh, that they weren't able to um, afford because it had to be dropped out of the contract was the door. You can see, I'm not going to use the pointer again in case it sends its berserk again. Um, but you can see that the door has got, uh, is cemented up with concrete blocks. Um, and we felt that um, leaving uh, a lovely job, beautiful uh, uh, building, beautifully restored, with the cement blocks would be a shame. So um, we um, we offered to pay for a new door, and what we did actually was interesting. When they took away the cement blocks, they discovered that originally it had been um, a wooden door, and that all of the hinges, all of the fixings, and the grill were actually lying inside the mausoleum. So um, uh, we paid for a, a new door and uh, all, all of the pieces were put back in place. And so that, um, that meant it, it ended up looking really good. Now, this is an interesting one. This is in, uh, in County Antrim. And um, it's um, um, to, the, to members of the Stevenson family. Um, I think you could say that there's more than a little bit of oriental fantasy um, about this particular structure. It's very much like a, a miniature Mughal tomb. Um, um, the Taj Mahal, of course, springs to mind um, and um, uh, as do, do others. Um, the connection there was that um, one of the Stevenson family who was buried there uh, worked in Madras for many years and obviously saw some of the very fine tombs there and decided that when he um, passed from this mortal life that he was going to have one as well. Um, it was in, as you can see there, you can see bits and pieces have fallen off um, the structure, a lot of weeds around it. And so we did a lot of work on persuading the local authority to, to do some work on it. And as you can see, they've... Um, uh, restored it very nicely um, and it it um, it does look very well um, and it's to me just a lovely structure and this is just a detail of the door. Now I told you that I was going to throw in two um, different structures um, for this um, talk um, partly because they're very close to your neck of the woods but I thought it might be interesting to mention this one. It's Hollymount um, Church in, in County Mayo. It's a redundant Church of Ireland church, but with <clears throat> a cast iron spar, which is spectacular, not to say the least. It's also probably one of the nicest piece of landscape structures that you can see. It's an eye catcher, et cetera. And um, <clears throat> it was, um, there were some issues with it. Um, somewhere I have written down a description of exactly what it looks like. Yes, it's, a, it's an octagonal spire with six levels of cast iron plates bolted um, with cast iron. It's got quatrefoil openings, uh, which are decorative and functional as well. 
um, you can see they are, it is very decorative, but it also allows the wind to pass through it without sort of um, get, uh, creating too much um, resistance. Um, there are um, very few, it was, it was erected in 1818, which is very early, and um, all the research that's been done into it shows that in Rouen um, Cathedral, uh, there is one in um, Zagan in Poland, but all of these post-date the one in Hollymount. So why on earth did we end up with this amazing structure built in 1816 in County Mayo? Nobody knows. But anyway, um, work is going to be undertaken this year, and I do hope that uh, it will have a bright new future. I believe that it will. Um, this memorial um, uh, column is to a man called Henry Barry Beresford, and it's quite close to Limavady in uh, County Londonderry. You can see it was in a poor state when uh, we um, first went to see it. Um, this is our um, Severe Chris McCollum um, on a, a very um, shaky looking structure inspecting it. Um, this is it when it started work. Um, it's a very exposed site. Um, there was actually snow, I think, lying in the fields at that time. And those men were working right on the top of it. It needed uh, a new capstone. Uh, it needed a lot of work done to it as well. And it needs to be completely repointing pointed. The, um, the ca original capstone had split and water had been pouring down through the structure for many years. He said four plaques were north, south, east and west. Um, they had suffered from some vandalism, as you can see, um, but um, we reinstated frames around the two that existed. Two of them had been smashed um, by the vandals. Um, but we did know the inscriptions that were on them originally. So we got some uh, Welsh slate and had them um, uh, re-lettered with the original wording. Um, that was quite tricky in itself. Um, it couldn't be, we couldn't afford to have it completely hand carved. But um, uh, I think this is a fairly good approximation. You can see what the original one looked like, the lettering. And this is the obelisk after uh, its conservation in 2015. It's a nice um, um, structure in the landscape. Then we, um, we published this um, book, which um, had one of um, Michael Craig's lovely drawings on the back of it. He came up specially and, and did it for us. And on the front is a, a painting by Astley of the Beresford family. <clears throat> uh, Henry Barry Beresford's father was John Beresford, who is um, well known for um, many things, but um, uh, amongst them was for bringing um, James Gandon to Ireland and for a lot of um, uh, development in Dublin. So I promised you I would let you see the, um, uh, the, the Moot Park lion and, um, uh, and talk about it briefly. I suppose it doesn't fit in really, but um, it was, it's a great story. Um, this was what it looked like originally. Now, all of the um, farm buildings are still there, um, I'm afraid, but the um, lion stands proud above them all. He had for many years had bees flying in and out of his mouth, um, rather like the Tate and Lyle um, uh, advertisement. Do, do many of you remember that? Um, and um, uh, this was uh, this was uh, the um, date stone on the corner of the um, of the structure, and this is a slightly closer up one of the lion. You can see that his uh, legs had um, collapsed. Um, the bees were still buzzing around. They turned out to be a very rare type of bee, so it was quite difficult to get them out. And um, uh, several people apparently had taken pot shots at him as well, which didn't help. So um, a group of people working together, and I think this is another reason why I, why I put this in as an example. If, if many people come together, it can sometimes be a really satisfactory outcome. 
In this particular case, it was the Roscommon Heritage Group who were the main leaders of it. They got grants from the Irish Georgian Society, from the Follies Trust, built Heritage Investment Scheme. And the Heritage Officer in, um, in Roscommon was uh, tremendously um, helpful uh, as well. And um, basically what we did with, as far as the lion was concerned, he was in such poor order that it was decided that the only way to get him fixed was to take him to the Coatstone uh, factory, which is in Wiltshire. However, when we um, uh, looked at the budget for um, doing this commercially, um, it was just simply out of the question. So um, we had a very good contractor, Jerry Durvin, and um, he agreed to take the lion down from his um, <clears throat> place on top of the gate um, on uh, a Friday. He was loaded into the van of a local contractor who allowed his van to be used over the weekend. And one of the Roscommon Heritage Group, once he was all packed up, um, drove him over to Wiltshire um, on the Friday night, crossing the ferry, drove him down and deposited him. And he was there for a couple of weeks being repaired. And then, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, excuse me. And then um, he um, went back on a, um, a Friday evening, picked him up, drove him back. He was back in Roscommon on Sunday night. So this was the... Um, lion conserved um, and ready to go back up again. I think we've missed one, haven't we? Oh yes, no, he really does look wounded, doesn't he? And this is him being put back on top of the gate again. And we had a very nice <clears throat> celebra celebration of um, the, his return to his original slot. Um, I don't know whether again you know the, uh, this um, this entrance way to Moat Park, but um, it's 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 a very good news story and a great story of local people um, cooperating and doing great things. Um, this um, beehive mausoleum is uh, near um, Delvin in County Westmeath, um, and it was to a man called Cook. And uh, he, as you can see, it was in very poor order and there had been a huge amount of vegetation had grown around it. And um, a very um, eccentric gentleman called uh, Adolphus Cook had it erected uh, for his father because his father believed in reincarnation and thought he was going to come back as a bee. And so the idea was that um, he, if he had a beehive, if he was buried in that, then he would be able to escape. Um, so this is the um, beehive mausoleum um, after it had been um, fully restored. Um, as you can see, it's um, it, it's just a fabulous structure. I think it's just so satisfying those um, sort of um, structures, so good to the eye. And um, uh, we had this um, uh, very nice opening. Um, the rector, as you can see, is there. Um, so is James Stevens Kerr. Um, so is um, Bernadette Solon, who's the um, heritage officer. Thomas Packenham, who gave us a most entertaining um, talk on the day um, about the connections between the Packenham family and the um, Cook family. And uh, it was uh, quite hilarious. And this was one of the children enjoying the, um, the, the structure on the day. Um, this is a memorial column to Cornelius O'Brien um, in um, uh, very close to the Cliffs of Moor. I'm wondering how about my time. I'm okay, I think. Um, and um, when we were down County Clare, um, we'd met up with Owen Madigan, who um, is a, a, a SPAB scholar and um, a stonemason. And he did some other work for us, restoring a small um, roadside well. And 
when you were there, he said to me about the fact that the urn on the top was listing and on this column, and he was quite concerned about it. And if you look carefully, you can see that it, it is actually at an angle. And he felt that there was something wrong. So the very first used um, a drone survey to look at a structure. And this was the drone. And it's just amazing what you can see. Um, when you when you look at that, uh, you can see the displaced stone. You can actually see um, on either sides. Uh, um, you can actually see where the metal clips were. Those metal clips had rusted and they pushed the stone out. And um, as you can see there as well. So water was getting down inside the column and causing causing problems. Um, there was also a large amount of growth um, at, at the base of, of the column. And um, this is the, um, the urn um, after the major conservation work. One of the things that had to be done was when they got the scaffolding up on the structure, um, they discovered that the urn, which had been listing, as, as I mentioned earlier, um, it in fact was only attached by a pin, which was about two inches long, I think. And um, so it actually had to be lifted down by crane onto the ground um, and reassembled and then put back again. So it was a major piece of work, but I think it's, it's these sort of columns, they're so important in our landscapes. Um, if we lose them, it's at our peril, I think. So this is another mausoleum. Um, it's the 1860s designed by uh, Thomas Turner. Um, and it's in Clock in uh, County Down, um, and it's in the graveyard. It's to the Merlin family, and it's in the graveyard of um, um, the Clock non-subscribing Presbyterian Church. And it, it's the carving on it is wonderful, um, and um, you can see there the um, damage um, that was uh, occurring. The um, vegetation was lifting um, the, uh, the the little ridge tower, and um, so this was a case of work done on the basis of a stitch in time saves nine, because we were concerned um, uh, uh, about it. <clears throat> when it was opened up, you can see inside the um, the um, coffins very neatly arrayed, <clears throat> and at the back there's a grill. And there was a grill at the other end of the mausoleum as well. <clears throat> and that was where we discovered one of the problems which we hadn't anticipated, but the door was was reaffixed um, after some damage. So this is a relationship between <clears throat> the um, mausoleum and the church. Uh, you can see it just to the right hand side. And this is a close up of it after work had been undertaken. Um, quite a lot of the stone around the grill. Um, it, the grill had rusted and um, it was um, the stonework had, had come adrift. And so it had to be um, replaced. All these photographs were taken on a lovely sunny day, weren't they? And this was the <clears throat> three men who worked on the uh, thing, Noel Killen, who's um, uh, a tremendous craftsman and his son on uh, his left uh, and um, one of the other workmen. So this is a photograph of the most recent um, project that we have just completed. It's a pair of um, um, pyramid-shaped mausolea in um, Maudlin's graveyard in Nace. So in the next while, if you're anywhere near Nace, do go and have a look at these structures. It's not like they are as they are now, because they have been um, uh, carefully conserved. But this was how they were when we got there first. This was the second one. Um, this is to the de Berg family, and um, a very well-known family, obviously in the area and in the well beyond. It doesn't look quite as bad, but in fact, um, 
that um, uh, ivy on the top had done a huge amount of damage, damage and there was a lot of ivy on the back, which you can see on the right hand side. This was the doorway and with the uh, uh, de Berg crest um, up above. This was the, the other doorway um, on the east um, mausoleum, the first one that I showed you. And um, this sort of just gives you some idea of uh, what the structure was like. The stone was basically a skin on the exterior <clears throat> and <clears throat> the growth uh, of ivy on the top and the other vegetation, there was quite a lot of saplings had grown in behind, the roots had grown in behind the stone. And they had sort of, um, it was really like turf in behind really, when you got there. And um, <clears throat> this was looking at some of them when some of the pointing had been taken out. There had also been cement pointed at some stage, which had probably actually added to the problems. So this was um, the scaffolding going up on the, on the De Berg um, pyramid in uh, 2019, I think it was, wasn't it? 2020, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, this is just really to show um, one of the tree roots which came from the ground and grew up behind the whole structure and thing. And they very <coughs> carefully um, took, it, um, uh, took it away without damaging the plaque which was um, on the structure. Some very, very skillful work carried out by vernacular conservation. Um, this is all very well documented on our um, website, and in fact, um, Owen Madigan gave a talk about it as well. So um, this is how it looks now. Um, we also had to have new, um, the, we had to have the doors conserved. Now, actually, there wasn't very much left of the original doors. Um, Bushy Park Ironworks again did the work, and um, they kept as much of the original um, as they could. And this is the one that you may recall that I showed at the beginning, which had a huge growth of vegetation on the um, on the top. And there they kept, had could only keep even less of the door. But you you can see if you if you look at it, the cross shaped in the centre is part of the original doorway. And this is three of the guys from um, Bushy Park um, Ironworks, Colin Bagnall on the right hand side. And uh, then we had uh, we had a handing over the keys. Um, the other thing that Bushy Park did was they put mortise locks back on, um, which is how it would have been originally. And um, it had most magnificent keys. And uh, on this particular occasion, on the left hand side is Bridget Lachlan, the heritage officer, the rector. Um, and on the right hand side is Michael Parsons and the local uh, Las Cahirlock. And uh, we got two of our grandsons to hold a ribbon and she cut a ribbon for us, um, which was just all a bit of fun, I think. We also had um, two visits from Malcolm Noonan, who, as you know, is the Minister for Housing, Local Government and Heritage. He took a huge interest in um, the work, uh, which was being partly granted by his department. And um, uh, he, he came in 2020 and then he came again uh, this year. He's very interested in skills, heritage skills training. And he met several of the, um, um, the apprentices who were actually working on the site, both with vernacular conservation and with um, Bushy Park Ironworks. And this is a socially distanced, suitably socially distanced graph. Um, I hope in days to come, we'll all look back on these socially distanced things and think, gosh, weren't we mad? Um, and uh, I'm coming close to the end. This is to show um, a pyramid in Garvan, which uh, we um, are, um, we've done an initial survey on it and we're trying to persuade the local authority to work with us and do some conservation work. As you can see, all that vegetation is not doing a lot of good. All those trees over the top of it are not doing it a lot of good and it needs some work done to it. But um, sometimes 
Follies Trust has to work for a long time with the local authority before we finally persuade them to do it. But I hope we will manage it. Um, and in um, 2016, uh, when the Follies Trust was 10 years old, we produced this uh, publication which showed uh, the, the projects that we've been involved in. So um, that's um, the conclusion of, of um, my talk. I'm, I'm sorry that I probably ran over time because of the fact that um, we lost a bit in the middle. And so, um, Martin, my apology. Um, I'm sorry about that. But um, anyway, I hope you've um, found something of interest um, during the course of my talk. And thank you for listening to me. <laughs>